Hi everyone, welcome back to the Movie Reviewers 100. My name is Scott, also known as Cineram. I do the Thursday reviews on this uh, channel, and our theme this week is movies that came out the year that each of us was born. Um, I wanted to give a special mention to uh, Jim Gisrael, who did a, uh, a guest spot uh, on uh, the channel here uh, yesterday. Um, he did a review of uh, Twilight Zone, the movie, which came out in 1983, the year he was born. Uh, and of course, we'd had reviews already from Ian and James and Ray. Um, my particular year of birth is 1973. And as um, some of you who have been watching my personal channel for a while might know, I've been taking the last year and a half to watch 1973 movies. Um, more or less randomly. Uh, <laughs> I was planning originally to do a whole review series um, uh, over the calendar year of 2013, which uh, was the year I turned 40. Um, I thought it was a good time to look back at some of that stuff. Many of those films I had never seen before. Um, but I went through periods of um, um, losing enthusiasm, um, not wanting to take the trouble to record videos, and of course being distracted by uh, uh, newer, more exciting stuff. Um, a lot of the stuff that I saw I really liked quite a lot from 1973. Um, and it's good to have sort of that change of pace because uh, unlike movies from the 40s and 50s where the cinema style was very sort of um, rigid and unexciting to me, um, 1973 has a little bit more spice to it um, without having the uh, incredibly over-edited, over-scored, over-CGI uh, quality of a lot of uh, modern films that are made now. Um, there aren't many classic films made now, just mostly modern films. Um, but uh, I managed to watch, over the course of about 17 months, 60 movies that came out in 1973, a few of which I'd already seen, but most of which I hadn't. Um, and so I wanted to do a little recap video rather than focus on one particular movie in particular. Um, some of the, uh, well, I started with um, focusing on some of the big awards contenders. Um, I saw three of the five Best Picture nominees. Um, um, one of them, uh, the, the Sting, American Graffiti, uh, Cries and Whispers, and A Touch of Class were all Best Picture nominees. Um, but uh, I didn't get around to seeing either Cries and Whispers and, or A Touch of Class. I might get to see them at some point. Um, because they have a couple of acting nominations there as well. I think A Touch of Class actually has a Best Actress winner. Um, but uh, I didn't get to see either of those. Um, the fifth nominee um, was The Exorcist, which I did see, of course. Um, some of the uh, other uh, classic films from that year that I saw were um, Badlands by Terrence Malick, The Long Goodbye by Robert Altman, Silent Green, um, the classic sci-fi film with uh, Charlton Heston, Oh Lucky Man, uh, with Malcolm McDowell, uh, the Clint Eastwood uh, Dirty Harry movie Magnum Force, Enter the Dragon, one of the most popular titles from that year. I think it's um, among the um, titles on IMDb from 1973. That's the one with the highest rating. Uh, Paper Moon, um, Sleeper, Woody Allen, um, a horror movie with Roddy McDowell called Legend of Hell House, um, The Way We Were uh, with Barbara Streisand and Robert Redford. I took the time to see all of those movies, and uh, I think that... Uh, yeah, no, I hadn't seen any of them at that point. No, I hadn't seen any of them before. Um, a couple of movies that I saw that I didn't like all that much, Westworld, science fiction movie with Yul Brenner, uh, Clint Eastwood Western, High Plains Drifter, um, the Brian De Palma movie Sisters, uh, the James Bond movie Live and Let Die, and probably the worst movie from that year that I saw was called Electric Glide in Blue, uh, which stars um, it's the guy from Lost Highway, Robert Blake. Um, as a uh, motorcycle patrolman uh, in Arizona. And uh, the first half of that movie is, is, is fine. The second half is absolutely terrible, and the ending goes on for a really, really, really long time. Um, I also saw a Western with um, um, Chris Christopherson called Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. And I was immediately reminded of uh, the movie Young Guns 2 because there's actually, not only does it co star James Coburn, who was in Young Guns 2, but there's an actual scene which almost exactly replicates um, a scene from Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. I mean, in Young Guns 2 replicates it. It's really weird having seen Young Guns 2 when it came out, and then over 20 years later watching Pat Garrett and Gilly, Billy the Kid and thinking, gee, this reminds me of a movie that was made 20 years after <laughs> this. It's, it's a little strange. Um, 
But uh, let me tell you um, what my uh, 20 best movies of the year were. I sort of was keeping track of um, what I was watching and kind of ranked them as I went along. And the ranking on these specifically is a bit arbitrary, I guess. Um, but definitely my number one is my number one. So um, let me start at the um, number 20. Um, my number 20 choice for the year was The Paper Chase, which is a drama based on a play, I believe, um, it was directed by James Bridges, and it's about a guy uh, and some other students uh, attending law school and uh, taking a course by John Houseman, who of course won Best Supporting Actor. Um, number 19, The Wicker Man, um, which was remade as a very silly Nicolas Cage movie. It's basically about a cop who visits an island investigating the disappearance of a, a, a girl and finds a very, very strange cult. Um, Christopher Lee is uh, one of the stars of that movie. Um, uh, my number 18 is a movie that I actually just only finished watching yesterday uh, called Scarecrow. Um, it's uh, directed by uh, Jerry Schatzberg, a director I'm not really familiar with, but it stars Gene Hackman and Al Pacino as a couple of drifters um, who um, meet sort of by chance while they're hitchhiking and decide to um, collaborate on a partnership um, running a car wash in Pittsburgh. Um, they're basically trying to make their way to Pittsburgh uh, where Gene Hackman has money saved in a bank. Um, <clears throat> and along the way, Al Pacino wants to visit um, his former girlfriend in Detroit uh, because uh, she had his child while he was in the Navy. Um, and they're basically sort of eking out an existence along the way. Um, it's a, sort of a, a rambling movie. I think there was a lot of improv in the film as well. It doesn't seem terribly tightly scripted, but it's really kind of strange seeing Gene Hackman in a role where he's sort of a dumbass. Uh, versus most of the most of the movies he's in, he really has his stuff together. Um, um, my number uh, seventeen was Coffee, the classic Pam Greer black exploitation movie, really fun movie. I also saw Cleopatra Jones, which is extra extremely silly and an obvious imp inspiration for uh, Austin Powers, especially the Beyonce Knowles character from uh, the third Austin Powers movie. Um, <clears throat> Papillon um, was a film that I'd seen uh, prior to uh, um, my you know uh, uh, little marathon here. Um, it was directed by Franklin J. Schaffner, and it's uh, based on a true story about a couple of guys uh, in prison in France uh, for many decades. They're played by um, Dustin Hoffman and Steve McQueen, right? <laughs> Steve McQueen. Uh, Day of the Dolphin is a movie that I didn't really know anything at all about. Um, it was directed by Mike Nichols, as it turns out, and stars uh, George C. Scott as a scientist who's attempting to teach dolphins to speak English, to speak and understand English. Um, and then there's this sort of conspiracy plot involving training dolphins to um, um, swim uh, underneath like a boat where uh, uh, an assassination target is and set a bomb there with a magnet. <laughs> um, there's, there's a credibility issue here. If you can swallow um, the premise, it's actually a really, really well-directed movie. It's quite sinister, actually. Paul Servino also plays a, a key supporting part. Um, really enjoyed the movie quite a lot, uh, despite its, its uh, not believability. So good one on you, Mr. Nichols. Um, Lady Snowblood is a Japanese movie about um, uh, a woman who was, uh, had a, a child out of wedlock in a woman's prison uh, and uh, then goes on sort of a revenge uh, um, kick. I believe, I, I, it's been a really long time since I saw the movie, so I don't remember the exact plot, but there's a lot of um, um, scenes and elements that look, really look like they uh, were an inspiration for Tarantino when he did Kill Bill, especially the first uh, half of that. Uh, which takes place uh, in Japan and involves a Lucy Luke character. Um, the Crazies by George Romero. Um, I really wasn't expecting this movie to be very good at all. Turns out it was actually really, really good. Um, one of the main characters has a brief appearance in uh, Dawn of the Dead. Um, this basically uh, involves um, people that have just sort of like contracted a virus of some kind that makes them, it sends them into a murderous rage. Uh, and uh, there's a small group of people that are trying to avoid them and get to safety. Um, really excellent film. Uh, I was surprised by that. Um, the Spook Who Sat by the Door um, is uh, also based on a novel. Uh, it's about an African-American African man who passes the, uh, uh, the trials to join the CIA, but really doesn't do anything once he's there. Instead, he takes the knowledge that he gets there and turns all the gangs into uh, urban warriors 
um, once he gets back to Chicago. It's a really good movie. Um, Ivan Dixon is the director of that film. I'm not really familiar with uh, what he's done. Although I probably looked up all these movies when I first reviewed them, but you know, off the top of my head, it's hard to remember uh, at this point because it's been months since I've uh, seen some of these. Um, Save the Tiger is a uh, John G. Albertson movie. He directed The Karate Kid uh, and stars Jack Lemmon as a guy who runs a clothing manufacturer. It's a drama, basically. Um, the thing that really surprised me about this movie, uh, two things actually. One, uh, how cavalier everyone was about hitchhikers back in the 70s, apparently. <laughs> Nobody thought anything about just giving a complete stranger a ride. Um, and the other thing is the transfer on this particular disc was very, very nice. Much better than pretty much all the other movies that I watched. Um, it looks like a movie that was shot now, but set in the 70s. Except, of course, for the fact that Jack Lemmon is is uh, actually, did I say Nicholson earlier? I apologize for that, it's Jack Lemmon. Jack Lemmon won Best Actor for that movie. Anyway, really nice transfer, very, very good looking transfer on that movie, Save the Tiger. Um, my number 10 is the classic horror movie, The Exorcist, uh, directed by William Friedkin, you all know what that one's about. Um, number nine, another movie that I just saw yesterday, Cinderella Liberty, um, which is directed by Mark Rydell. Um, it stars James Caan as um, a sailor uh, in the Navy who, uh, uh, basically um, is uh, on shore at New York City, but his paperwork gets lost, so he's sort of stuck um, in, the, um, in, the, uh, in, the, in, in limbo, kind of, in military limbo for months. And while he's there, he strikes a relationship with uh, uh, Marsha Mason, who's um, making ends meet whatever way she can and taking care of her son, and uh, they sort of develop a relationship there. It's good drama. It's also based on a novel. And uh, the novelist wrote the screenplay as well. <clears throat> um, number eight, The Last of Sheila. This is a movie that a friend of mine sent me uh, that I really enjoyed quite a lot. It's it's pretty light fare. It's a murder mystery, but um, it's uh, it's it's got a lot of uh, fun moments to it. It's directed by Herbert Ross, um, who did Boys on the Side, along with a lot of other movies. And um, the uh, the stars are James Coburn. James Coburn's one of the main characters. Also, um, the, one of the other main characters is a guy whose name escapes me, but he also played the main character in Westworld. I'd never seen this guy in a movie before, um, but he's really good. Um, number seven, Massacre in Rome. Um, this uh, was directed by George Cosmatus, who went on to make American movies such as Tombstone and Rambo First Blood Part Two. But from what I gather, he was sort of just sort of like the placeholder director, and really Stallone and Kurt Russell did most of the directing of the actual directing on those movies. I don't know. This is just what I read. Um, but Massacre in Rome um, basically is set uh, in the 40s and involves um, Germany occupying Italy. Um, uh, and uh, what happens is uh, some um, insurgents, they set off a bomb near a German uh, procession and uh, kill like 32 soldiers. So the Fuhrer demands that the German soldiers in Italy round up 320 people, 10 for each German soldier that have been killed and execute them within 24 hours time. And this is a huge task for these guys and they don't want to do it, but they're under orders and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big mess. It's a big mess that has to be dealt with. Also based on a true story. Um, the only young person who I recognized in the cast was Mar Marcello Mastriani, who plays a Catholic priest who's trying to get word of this to the Pope so the Pope can publicly condemn or at least communicate with Adolf Hitler and say, don't do this because as it happens, Hitler was Catholic. Um, really, really good movie. Um, I hadn't really, I, I, I don't know how many uh, cosmetist movies I've seen, but this is definitely the best of the lot. Um, a director I'm quite fond of, Paul Verhoeven, um, released a movie um, called Turkish Delight with Rutger Hauer. Uh, and it's about um, this sort of devil may care guy and is, uh, he's an artist and he meets this girl and they have this sort of tumultuous relationship. Um, it's really, really, uh, I, I love Paul Verhoeven, I love his style and this is a very energetic, exciting film. Um, Day of the Jackal uh, is a movie that I'd seen uh, a few times before when I was younger, directed by Fred Zinnemann. It's about um, the plot to stop an assassination of the uh, president of France. Um, the main character, the investigator, went on to play a Bond villain in Moonraker, and he was also in Steven Spielberg's uh, film Munich. Um, really, really good uh, picture. Um, my number four, Don't Look Now, uh, by Nicholas Rugg. It's about um, Julie Christie and Donald Sutherland. Uh, as Americans uh, living in France, I think, in Paris. Uh, I might have that wrong. No, no, it must be, 
where was it? Jeez, you know, I'm really having trouble recalling the details of some of these. Anyway, it's a it's a, a suspense thriller. There's a serial killer running around, and um, and uh, he's an art restorer. It's it's hard to remember the exact thrust of the movie, but I really really liked it a lot. It's one that I'd seen many years ago. It's just something very very dynamic and uh, and attention getting. Uh, number three, Serpico. This is a classic movie with Al Pacino as this cop who refuses to take bribes, despite the fact that every other cop that he works with takes bribes. It's directed by Cindy Lemay. It's a, a terrific movie. Um, one that I hadn't seen uh, prior to now, State of Siege, um, which takes place in a South American country and involves uh, some revolutionaries uh, that kidnap an American because um, they believe he's advising uh, the governments uh, on how best to uh, control and uh, you know uh, um, um, uh, run secret police and other, uh, and other things like that. It's a really, really good movie. Um, not on DVD as of right now, it's just on VHS. Um, but my number one picture of the year, and this is not an easy uh, choice to make here amongst all these movies, the one picture that I like the most uh, from that year is called The Friends of Eddie Coyle, it's directed by Peter Yates, who also did the uh, cycling movie Breaking Away. Um, and uh, the uh, main character is played by um, Robert Mitchum, who's uh, sort of a small-time gun dealer, and I think he's probably like in his 50s or at least his late 40s when he made this movie, he's sort of <laughs> aging out of the business of, uh, of uh, black market gun dealing um, and just sort of him dealing with all the uh, uh, troublemakers and what have you and people who are, uh, uh, you know, uh, just, just giving him a hard time. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of friends anymore. It's just a, it's a really solid movie. And I was expecting a certain type of ending out of this, like sort of a Clint Eastwood style ending where he shows all the uh, guys who's boss and who really uh, has the stuff. But uh, things don't turn out uh, as expected. At least it didn't for me. Um, yeah, a lot of these movies were recommended by people um, as I asked for them on YouTube before the whole Google Plus uh, BS went down uh, last fall. Um, I had invited people to recommend uh, titles, and I'd gotten a bunch of them, especially from 99 Filmo. Uh, but a lot of other people recommended titles, and there was a couple that I didn't get, get to, such as Sex and Fury, the Japanese movie that Puckbond 007 recommended that I uh, check out. Fortunately, I haven't been able to find a copy of some of them. But I got to see a lot of them. Um, 60 movies over, um, what was it, 17 months? Uh, it's not a great average. I was hoping to do like at least one a week, if not two. Um, but like I said, there was long periods where I just didn't really bother with it. But um, I wanted to sort of wrap things up uh, for this particular theme on the Collab channel. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. And uh, if you haven't seen some of these movies on my top 20, you ought to check them out because they're pretty, pretty darn good. Um, thank you for watching. Appreciate it. Um, and uh, please uh, check the uh, link below to our Facebook page and recommend future uh, themes that we could do. Um, look forward to uh, the uh, theme starting on Friday, uh, which we'll be discussing actors, actresses, and, and other filmmakers who share the same birthday as one of our members. That would be James, DVD Collector 1974. Uh, thanks again. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.